Hey everybody, what's going on? Eric here. Hope you guys are doing well out there. Today I went over to Harbor Freight to pick up something that might be of some use. Uh, I'm not quite sure yet, but I'm going to test this product out and we're going to go and kind of like see what it is in, well, right now I guess. Alright, so I got the body of the guitar already prepped for buffing. It's been sanded with the 15, 25, and the 3000 grit sandpaper. And it's just left me a nice flat surface. All the orange peel that was in this body is, is gone. All the dirt, dust that was in the clear, gone. Uh, any like little imperfections that were like a little sag I had going on over here, gone. So it's nice and flat, front, sides, and the back, as you can see. Now, the neck is going to be a different story. The neck, I think I'm going to just have it a, um, like a satin finish on the back of the neck, but the front of the neck, the fretboard, and the headstock will be a gloss. You want to have a nice, smooth, soft neck. So this is all ready to go. I ended up watching a video a long time ago, and I wanted to kind of, like, test out this theory. And I've always heard bad things about it, but... The equipment that you use uh, kind of like shows how your work is going to end up, okay? So Ben Coombs was doing a video a while back. He was polishing, I believe it was a black Les Paul. He picked up a uh, drill buffing system, which is an adapter that you put on the end of your, your cordless drill or corded drill, and you go to town as far as buffing and polishing or whatever, you know, the whatever you're going to do. Well, he was working on, I believe it was a black... Les Paul. And I ended up putting a comment on his video about this and uh, basically tell him, you know, kind of go through the steps. You really want to wow, you know, the person who owns that guitar, go through the steps with the sandpaper and stuff like that. And, uh, you know, then do the buffing. And he basically said that, you know, he didn't care. It had some pretty bad scratches in it. And after he buffed it and showed it, I saw some hazy marks in the finish as well. Now that's not from uh, the scratches and stuff. That's from how he was buffing it. Okay. And I've said this before in other buffing videos or polishing videos that I've seen uh, uh, another P apple who we won't name names, but how he does his polishing. And I don't know what he uses or how he's doing it. If he's doing it by hand, but my kid, could sit there and buff out a finish by hand uh, a lot better than what he did. So you're only as good as the tools that you have. Here's my Atachi. Now, as you can see, here's the adapter. You want to make sure that's locked in nice and tight because you don't want it to come loose on you. Now, all Coreless drills and wire drills are not created equal as far as RPMs go. If you're going to use a buffing system, that goes on to a cordless or a wired grill, that drill, you want to make sure that your drill has enough RPMs, revolutions per minute, uh, to do the job as far as polishing. Now, I have this set to low. That's the highest setting, okay? Now, if I set this on high, it really takes off. Now, that's going to give me the power that I need to let the cutting creams and the pad do its job. If you don't have the right tools, it's going to mess up. So I want to try this. So I'm using the back of this guitar. So if it's going to mess up, at least I could refinish the back of the guitar without having problems, you know, with the rest of the guitar. So that's not a big deal to me. I could sit there and fix that real easily. Um, one of the things that I do when I buff out paint on a car is I keep a water bottle, like a little pump spray bottle with me, and I have some water inside there. It doesn't matter if it's cold, hot, warm, whatever. Uh, what I do when I'm buffing out a car in order to keep the friction and the heat down, uh, I will kind of mist the paint of the body of the car when I'm while I'm buffing. It keeps from, like I said, it keeps the friction, uh, helps you from not burning the paint or the edges. You know, you have to be careful when you're doing buffing. So guitars is going to be the same way. You can still burn through the finish and stuff. So instead of keeping a spray bottle with me, what I end up doing is this kit, as you've seen the adapter that goes onto the drill, it also comes with a wool pad, which I'm not going to be using. No, this is just Velcroed on. 
you've got your cutting pad, which is kind of a little bit stiffer of a pad. Then you got two polishing pads here. Now I've already kind of tell you a little bit of a secret. I kind of used the polishing pads for something else and it actually worked out pretty good, but don't tell nobody. So what I'm going to do with this is I'm going to soak them. All right. I want to wet them like a sponge, so squeeze them out really good, get all the moisture out of them as I can so it doesn't sling water all over the place or on me. I've got the laptop kind of covered up a little bit. You've seen that orange uh, cloth on there. So I'm gonna go wet this right now and then we're gonna start cutting this. All right, so I got my polishing pad, cutting pad, whatever you wanna call it. Well, this is the cutting pad on the adapter on my drill. And I'm gonna use the cutting cream, which is just automotive. 3M rubbing compound. This is the cutting cream. So I'm going to shake it. Add a little bit to some spots on the body. Not a whole hell of a lot. You don't need a hell of a lot. It's going to be loud, so I'm going to mute. Maybe play some nice music. Who knows? But I'm going to mute. So this isn't bad. It's going to have to be buffed out again a couple of times before I go to the next stage as far as the buffing goes. But that's not bad. So there's no hazing going on around the edges over here, which usually that's kind of where people have a problem with is getting really close to the edges. They're worried about cutting or buffing through on the edge and stuff like that. But this is this turned out all right. So I got a little bit of rubbing compound, Oops, wrong towel, right around the edge over here. Right around the edge over there. Yeah, this is gonna come out pretty good. Not bad for just a cutting cream. But I gotta do it again with the cutting cream before I go to the next step. So you're not gonna watch it because you just did. So the machine polish polishing pad is on my drill right now and I'm going to go ahead and start to polish the back with the number two machine polish. Now I stuffed some paper towel inside of here because you know I got clear covers that are going to go over these and uh, you know it kind of sucks trying to get the rubbing compound out of those chambers so kind of packed them in a little bit. Here's the rubbing compound I'm going to be using. This is the number two. Machine polish, already shaken, not stirred. Add some on here. Shouldn't need too much, even though I kind of put a little bit too much on there. And let's go to town. So I'm going to squeeze this around. And here we go again. Some Piapples may call that done. Not me. Two more times. And then it'll be done. After the third polish with the machine polish, I'm about two feet away from the body. Now, check this out. You can make out what's on the counter real easy. That's a gloss. Last pad. I got one more thing to do here. Now, if anyone says that this stuff here is a polish, 
They need to be shot. They don't know what they're talking about. This is for removing swirl marks and scratches. Well, if you're doing any type of a buffing, you might get some swirl marks if you're not that good. Scratches, well, there might be some leftover scratches in the finish from the remainder rubbing compound that I just used. So, this is going to ensure to remove that stuff. So I'll put a little bit here, a little bit here. A little bit here, a little bit here, a little bit here. Spread it around. Time to go to town again. Just think if this was black. All right, so I got the back and the sides done, but you know what else is done? My drill. The battery is dead. I got another battery, but that battery hasn't been charged either. So the fun thing about doing all this is getting getting this stuff on you and all over the area that you're working. So the top is going to have to wait till next time, and nothing I can do about it. All right, thanks for watching, guys. I uh, hope you enjoyed these series of videos that I've been putting up as far as the zebra stripe and all the other videos I've been putting up as well of the other builds and customizations I've been doing. I have a, another guitar that is waiting for me. It is a fluorescent uh, pink, I believe it is, or fluorescent orange Kramer that is going to get a completely rebuilt. And it's for one of my buddies, uh, what can I say? Wally in a box. Great guy. Check his videos out if you want to. I have. I enjoy them. And uh, yeah, so catch y'all later.